In this video, I'm going to show you an awesome Druid build featuring the formidable Beast form, and mostly focusing on one form that stands out, the Deep Wrath. This creature comes with a cool charge ability, allowing you to rush forward, attacking all enemies in the way, and potentially knock them prone. Imagine the power of combining this with the Tavern Brawler feat, doubling your string modifier to attack and damage your rolls. This turns you into an AoE destroyer, capable of taking out a bunch of folks in one go. Let's dive into the details of this spell. To start the spell, choose the Jewish subclass. For cantrips, consider taking Guidance, offering a 1d4 bonus to ability checks. The other cantrips are totally up to you, since we won't be using them in combat. For stats, Dexterity 16, Constitution 15, and later, we'll make it 16 with the Tavern Brawler feat. Wisdom 16, and it is your spellcasting ability, affecting your spell DC and spell attack rolls. You might want to invest a few points in string as well, improving your jumping distance and carrying capacity. At level 2, things get interesting as you choose your Jewish subclass. This spell can work with any subclass. I prefer the Circle of the Moon, because it grants you the combat wild shape, allowing you to shift into beast form using your bonus action, making it more flexible in combat compared to the other subclasses that use an action. With the Circle of the Moon, you can transform into beast form and make your attack in the same turn, which is a smoother experience. While in wild shape, you can talk or cast spells, you take on the animal's string, dexterity, and constitution scores while retaining your own intelligence, wisdom, and charisma score. However, it's a bit of a bummer that many animal forms have low dexterity, resulting in a lower AC and making them vulnerable in combat. When your beast form drops to zero hit points, you revert to your normal form. The separation of health pools between you and your beast form is a huge advantage, essentially giving you extra hit points and enhancing your survivability. Additionally, you gain Luna Mend, which allows you to spend spell slots to regain hit points while in wild shape. Moving on to level 3, you unlock new spells, and some of which are quite beneficial for this spell. Fox Skin, for example. A spell that boosts your AC to 16. What's great about this spell is that this effect persists even after shifting into the beast form, since many animal forms have a lower AC. This spell becomes quite helpful, but you need to maintain concentration. Fox Skin lasts until a long rest, so you can buff yourself after taking a long rest. The Moonbeam is also an excellent one, dealing 2d10 radiant damage within an area. You can move the beam on your next turn using your action. Keep in mind though, it's not available in your beast form, so it's most effective in your normal form. As for the other spells, go ahead and pick what you like. At level 4, you gotta pick a feat, and we're going with the Tavern Brawler. This feat doubles your string modifier to attack and damage your rolls when making an arm attacks. Since most of your animal forms utilize an arm attacks, this feat works incredibly well with this spell. With Terran Brawler, you can shift your play style to focus on the beast form, excelling in melee combat and providing you with extra hit points. Moreover, you unlock the Mighty Deep Wrath as your strongest wild shape. Its basic attack deals 3d4 and 1d6 plus A piercing damage, but its AC is fairly low, so consider using Box Skin before transforming. The real overpower ability is the Charge. Dealing 2d6 plus 8 piercing damage to any folks in the way, turning you into an AoE version of the monk. Moving on to level 5, you gain Wild Strike, allowing you to attack twice in one turn while in beast form, taking this spell to the next level. This is where things start to come together. You also get access to level 3 spells, but they don't synergize well with the beast form, so feel free to ignore them for now. For level 6, things get even more exciting with the Primal Strike. Now, your attack counts as magical, allowing you to bypass enemies' physical resistance, which is fantastic. Additionally, you unlock two new wild shapes, the Panther and the Owlbear. The Panther comes with Pounce, which lets you bite an enemy and potentially knock it prone, and then use the Juggler Strike to deal extra damage to prone targets. The Owlbear is a solid option with plenty of hit points. Its basic attack can knock your target back 1.5 meters, and it has the Enrage ability, boosting your string by 2 and potentially frightening nearby enemies. Crushing Fly is another great ability, 
allowing you to use your bonus action to jump at the target and knock it prone. Keep in mind that the Albear's large size might limit its maneuverability in small areas, but it's still one of my personal favorites. Moving on to level 7, you gain access to new spells, and these summon spells are particularly useful. You can cast them before transforming into the beast form, and they stay by your side when entering combat. Among other spells, freedom of movement is highly recommended, providing immunity to being paralyzed and restrained. Always cast it on yourself after rest. Stone skin is another fantastic choice, granting resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. At level 8, you unlock the Tiger Beast form, featuring the Shred Armor ability to reduce an enemy's AC by 1, but I prefer using the Bite attack, dealing quite decent damage and knocking your target prone if they fail a strength saving throw, then follow it up with a Jocular Strike for extra damage. For your second feat, I recommend the Warcaster. This grants you advantage on concentration saving throws, quite crucial for your beast forms to maintain concentration. Your beast forms won't be able to hold their concentration without this feat, and they don't benefit much from your gear as well. Only abilities from your race and class get carried to your beast form. Level 9, you unlock level 5 spells, and Conjure Elemental is a wonderful choice. Now you can summon more potent elementals to aid you in battle. Level 10 is a turning point for this spell, with improved Wild Strike. You gain an extra attack, allowing your wild ship to attack 3 times in one turn. If they're hasted, this becomes 6. This is where this spell starts to shine. You unlock the Dinosaur Beast form at this level. It can pounce on your target, knocking them prone. Afterward, you can use your action to attack 3 times, essentially giving you 4 attacks per turn. You also unlock several Elemental Myrmidon wild ships. But for this build, I only recommend the Earth Myrmidon. It uses unarmed attacks, aligning well with the Terran Brawler feat. Keep in mind that the Myrmidon Wild Ship consumes two chargers, meaning you can only use it once per short rest. The Earth Myrmidon deals 1d10 bludgeoning and 1d10 thunder damage, potentially knocking the target prone. It also comes with the Elemental Warp, a teleportation ability. You get access to Hero's Feet, a fantastic spell that grants your party immunity to being poisoned, diseased, and frightened, while also increasing their hit points, and it doesn't require concentration. At the final level, you have the option to choose a feat, and I recommend Resilient Constitution. This feat boosts your constitution by 1, and grants proficiency in constitution saving throws. This ensures you can maintain concentration as long as possible while in beast form. An alternative choice is Alert, providing a plus 5 bonus to initiative. What's great about this spell is that you don't necessarily need the best gear, given that you spend most of your time in beast form, which doesn't benefit from most equipment, but a few items can significantly boost your performance, such as the Armor of Moon Basking, providing 22 temporary hit points after casting Wild Shape. When you have those temporary hit points, this armor reduces all incoming damage by 1, grants a plus 2 bonus to AC, and gives you advantage on saving throws against spells. This effect persists after transforming into the beast form, making it the best armor for this build. Another valuable item is the Shapeshifter's Hat, increasing your wild shape charges by 1. For the other equipment, feel free to use what you have available. When it comes to wild shapes, the Deep Wrath stands out as the best in terms of damage. It deals a substantial amount of damage to folks in the area, making it really effective when surrounded by multiple enemies. If you want a bit of min-maxing, consider drinking the Elixir of Cloud Giant String. This Elixir boosts your strength to 27, providing a staggering plus 16 bonus to your attack and damage rolls. Truly formidable. When charging towards your foes, Try to cover as many enemies as possible while keeping the distance short. Keep in mind that the charge ability also uses your movement speed. Charging over a long distance may use up your movement speed immediately. Getting yourself hasted is highly recommended. This not only provides 3 extra attacks, but also doubling your movement speed. Also, consider having an ally use the Shriek ability from the Fala Aloof. 
when activated, all enemies within a 6 meter range suffer a 1d4 penalty to charisma, wisdom, and intelligence saving throws. Affecting creatures also take an additional 1d4 thunder damage. With this ability, every enemy you hit with a charge ability takes an extra 1d4 thunder damage. It becomes really insane while you are surrounded by like 5 or 6 enemies. Another powerful tool for this spell is the Elisa Power, Psionic Overload. This ability adds an 1d4 psychic damage to your attacks, but you take 1d4 psychic damage every turn. This effect lasts for 10 turns, and it works exceptionally well with your Beast Swarm, but you have to activate it before shifting into Beast Swarm. There's also Code of Weak. When you take down an enemy, it deals 1d4 psychic damage to all nearby enemies if you defeat a bunch of foes. The damage just adds up. These abilities are currently buffed by adding your Terran Brawler ability to the damage. Anyway, it's still somewhat powerful. It's also worth noting that in Honor Mode, the action economy works differently, with Haste only providing one extra weapon attack, and the Terran Brawler fee also has a glitch that doesn't add a double string modifier to your damage. Hopefully, Larian will fix this in future updates. For non AoE damage, Consider the dinosaur, tiger, or our bear wild ships. These forms allow you to make an extra attack with your bonus section, possibly knocking your target prone. And the Earth Myrmidon is particularly useful in boss fights due to its high hit points and resistance to physical damage. When it comes to concentration spells, Rock Skin is a solid choice since there are many ways to increase the AC of animal forms. Boosting their AC with Rock Skin helps them survive longer. Stone Skin provides physical resistance, but you can easily obtain this from a cleric using the Hellrider's gloves. If you prefer more spell options, you can go with the Circle of the Land subclass that offers a broader range of spell choices, including haste. And that wraps up today's spell. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Boulder Skate 3 builds. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video.